Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm going to pick up right where we left off with the last video. By the way, today is September 10th and as of today I've just published video number 11. So that gives you an idea of how far ahead of uh, I am re recording this. Again, I record about a week in advance, although that tends to vary. So when we left off, we were just getting dollars integrated and I had done this. And as I was afraid of, this isn't really that much more clear. Um, I think it will get better because we can start converting some of these things into dollars and have ending principle return of dollars rather than an amount. But it's, you know, it's pretty iffy. But hopefully it'll get better. I'm going to do the same thing here. I think I can just flip this equation around so I can say total withdrawals, new dollars, uh, total withdrawals dot subtract to zero starting principle uh, and then the amount of that does that give us the correct answer? Yes it does. Alright. Now let's um, let's go ahead and get starting balance in as a dollars uh, as dollars and then uh, and then we'll convert everything else over as well. Again, take this really slowly. I could just sort of hack it in, um, but my experience, I actually, in public, doing a training course, tried to fix a primitive obsession by taking big steps, and I screwed it up so badly that half an hour later, after, in front of an audience, after, you know, flailing for half an hour, I decided to revert to what was in version control, and then discovered that the network wasn't working and version control wasn't working. It was a complete disaster. And from that experience, <laughs> I have learned the very, very hard way that if you're going to deal with primitive obsession, take it in small steps because it's really easy. It looks simple, it's real, but it's really easy to get to a point where you can't solve the problem. Oh, which reminds me, I should check this into source code. I usually do that um, off camera, but uh, I forgot to do it last time. So we'll just call, we're at right now the end of episode 16. So let's see. And I haven't done it yet, but I do plan to put all this up on GitHub or somewhere like that. I don't know, it bites me. And that one always bites me too. That's why I take it slow. I always forget about these little things. Um, despite, you know, having done it four times now in this video and countless times uh, in other projects. Okay, so let's see, I think we can have this be a dollars now.
let's make a note that we want to uh, take dot value out of uh, next year test. Because eventually we won't need it, but the test won't fail. So I just want to make a note that we need to do that. Okay, so I think I can now start pulling out the dot amounts. Let's see. How do I want to deal with that? Let's convert, everything's working, right? Yeah, let's convert total withdrawals to dollars. Just going to keep sneaking up on this. Okay, so that's going to be convert. We're going to want amount to be dollars. So you can see why converting to capital or uh, eliminating primitive obsession can be a real challenge. Uh, if you wait too long. It's already kind of a pain in the butt, and I haven't actually waited that long. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Okay, there we go. Okay, and that is now a dollar, so I don't need to. Okay, so total withdrawals are now in dollars. Let's go ahead and do this one. I knew this would happen eventually. And this is, I don't know, this is ugly, I feel like, uh, having to just do this new dollars everywhere. But I don't want to create constants called $1,500, etc. So, I don't know. I think this is a case where the tests are ugly, but the actual interface is pretty clean because when we use it for real, we're not going to be doing this manual typing in of dollars, we're going to be taking a value from the UI, converting it to dollars, probably in just one line of code for each UI field, so, um, and possibly abstract even that. Okay, well everything's working there. Now, Let's start having each of these return dollars. So capital gain withdrawn, dollars. That's, of course, going to fail. Actually, that didn't fail. I guess we are not directly testing. Oh, that was a private method. <laughs> Let's have this return dollars. Well, that's interesting. It's a let's skip that one for now.
Okay, I am expecting that to fail because now I'm returning a dollars instead of a integer. Now I could say year dot total withdrawn dot amount, but I actually want to get rid of the dot amount method. And the reason for that is that if you've got a value object, you should be able to operate on that object as the object. Um, if you have a method to expose the internals, which sometimes you're going to want, but uh, if you have a, that method, you're going to be really tempted to just pull out the internals all the time and operate on that. And then you're starting to violate the law of Demeter, or you know, the pleasant guideline of Demeter is really what it should be called. And um, that can be bad in some circumstances. The law of Demeter was the law for a project called Demeter. It was one team's law. I don't think it's a general design law. Uh, so the name's a little unfortunate. But uh, it is still good advice. Anyway, uh, let's move on. What, what else is failing? Capital gains tax, right. So here. And what I've been thinking about, um, I knew this would come up. So during the break, I was thinking about this problem of having to say new dollars everywhere to do the equals. And I thought maybe I'd want to factor out my own assert equals that allowed you to compare an integer to a dollars. But let's see how it works out. It may actually not be that bad. So is everything working? Uh, well, in that test it is. Everything is working. Great. So now um, I think we should be able to say dot subtract and dot add. dot amount. Excuse my fumble fingers. Okay, that is not working. Why? Oh, it's parentheses. There we go. All right. Now let's uh, just continue on. We can have this return. Well, that's an interest rate, so let's not do that. Let's have this return of dollars. So the interest rate and the tax rate need to deal with dollars instead of integers as well, and we'll get into that, although looking at the time, probably not in this video. Definitely not as clear. That bugs me, but I don't think I have another option in Java. I suppose I could write a method called total, which would take a variable number of parameters. Um, if this continues to be a problem, that's something for me to consider. Looks like I was wrong about the test not failing. So there we go. Um, just a few seconds left in this video. Is there anything else I can do? No, I think that's going to have to do it. Uh, next time we'll continue getting rid of that primitive, uh, integrating dollars, and uh, hopefully get it done in the next video, although no promises. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.